oh, what a glorious day this is to get to do another show. I'm so excited. I'm Brenda Bates, Medicine Woman, and what I'd love to do is to call in the angels. Okay, I did this so well earlier. Let's just see if I can do it again. You know, I'm just so new at this. Oh, I call in the higher spirits. I call in the angels. I call in... I call in you now. Yeah, that was the first sign that I got. Holy... Okay, get away from the next one. Calling you. Show your presence. Oh, do you have a great message for me? Do you have a great message for me? I call in the masters. I call in the masters. Oh, I feel one present coming towards me. I can feel the energy of the monk. Join us, join us, master. Sit with us, master monk. As we do readings, this will be wonderful. Thank you, master, for being with us. Now I call in the angels, but I got to do a special prayer. I know, I will give them a song. A song! Yes, I will give them a song. And here we go. I call in the angels. I call in the angels. And I allow. Come forth. Come forth. I can feel the presence. I can feel the wings. I can feel it. I feel the masters are present. The monks. I feel the angel. Come, come, sit. I have two chairs. I'm waiting. To give in. messages. Thank you, and I thank you for helping me give the messages for the audience today. Thank you so much, because I know I cannot do it without you. You are the only ones that can see into that beyond that we need to. Thank you. Thank you. Hello. Welcome to tonight's show. It's a Medicine Women Reveal. I'm Brenda Bates, Medicine Woman. I'm Jen Toffel, Medicine Woman. And I'm Scott Bates, and welcome to our Halloween episode. Yes. And don't miss the, the YouTube version, for we have a wonderful intro for this show. So we have somewhat uh, no volume, but that's okay. We will do our best to figure out, can you hear us? That's what's the most important part, is if you can hear us, that'd be great. Anybody in the chat room, let us know. That would be great. So we have different costumes, and you'll have to tune in to the YouTube in order to enjoy what we're wearing. There's three costumes and we have a wonderful show for you. Okay, so Mark says he can hear. Okay, that's all I wanted to make sure, right, sure before I went into doing anything else. We have what they call hurricanes that are going on around us. Yeah, Hurricane Sandy. Okay, and then you said there was one from Canada too? Yeah, but some people have been calling it Frankenstorm because there's the Hurricane Sandy that's going on on the East Coast. And by the way, our prayers and we're sending angels to all yes. along the East Coast as it makes landfall. And then they said that the, um, oh, the, I can't remember the winds that come down from Canada. Oh, the jet stream? Nope. <laughs> um, but anyway, so there's this storm that's coming on with the cool wind from Canada and, and it's they're combining together right over Michigan, actually. Yes, and I did a heavy-duty prayer so that we could, what you call, um, be safe and sound, not just for us, but for everybody. mile an hour winds. Are you serious? Maybe a mile up. Huh. That's a, not that's much. a that can survive Great deal. That. Uh, but anyways, wow. we need to understand that this is a group conscious because we are living in this reality. It's not happening personally to me, so it's a few rings out, but it is happening in our group consciousness. So if we're going to take our part where our inner world creates our outer world, we would like to know, because each piece of person is individually um, connected to this, so there's personal things that we would have to heal so that we could create better. And then there is the group consciousness. Now, we're going to take the West Coast consciousness area, and we're going to... The West Coast? Yes, all okay. areas. The West Coast consciousness, and we're going to see what is it that they need to look at and, and heal from inside. And that has to do with whoever wants to read, but don't read so fast. 
and pause when you need to. Chapter or chapter nine. It, it, we're using Six. the deck of Collect Bearing Reed. It's number nine, and it's called Stormfields because it's upside down. Would you like me to hold it upright? It says number nine. I believe you. <laughs> it's Stormfields. Upside down. Reversed, yes, yes. Now is not the time to engage in any activity that brings unwanted chaos or drama into your life. Now stop. This is the thing. The energy that has been around today has been so strong that it has been affecting the reading, readings because they're influencing. It's a broadcast message that comes from the world, the people. It's all the water represents the emotions, the hurricane reminder of a tornado. So it's all the stuff that's getting stirred up and poured and dumped from the belly of the, the water. It is just coming up. And it's all the stuff that we need to look at. Now, our subconscious mind wants to bring up all that stuff that's been buried that you've said that I can't deal with, I'll deal with it later, fine, I'll just, uh, you know, it didn't happen to me, I suppressed it, but all that stuff you push down is coming to the surface. Why? To torture us? No. It is time for it to come up and say, can you heal it now? Can you resolve it now? Can you reprogram it now? Can you deal with it now? I don't want you to deal with it because that means you're just going to shove it back down again. Please, please, please take care of this and resolve it. So it comes back up and all the emotional upheaval is going to cause this mental stirring that will literally help us or break us. So today during the show, literally a lot this of bullying. Show, this afternoon yeah, show my, my afternoon show. show. Yeah, the, the bullying energy was so strong. And it was like, hmm, I, I don't need, did I say it wrong, Scott? So go ahead, correct the me. The bullying, like a I bully. can't say it. Bullying, I didn't want people to think you're B U L L Y, bully. And as the bully energy proceeds to move forward, it is the same thing as the archetypes. These are templates of characteristics we play that are we go through and with our consciousness. And it has been the pimp and the prostitute. It is I dictate you rule, right? No. I dictate I rule you follow. And the sad part is, is there's so much of that. That it is, okay, fine, I, I have to work to here where I hate it because I need money. Well, that's a form of a prostitute energy. It's not allowing yourself to honor that self. And so all those emotions have been stirring up. I mean, we had someone in the, the chat room, and I felt the, the bully energy, and I thought, no, this will not ha happen in my space. So I took charge. And then it was like, all right, you're doing your best to take and... <clears throat> triumph with your energy field, pay attention to me, and all I did was I released that energy and I reclaimed mine and I stood stronger. So we've been watching this energy. Part of what the storm fills is going on, go a little bit, so, so please don't stir up crap. It's going to be easy to stir up crap because it's going to push your buttons and you're going to make chemical peptides so you can personally take, uh, um, take it personal. You literally can take it personally and you sometimes will start to react and tank when you don't need to. Or take things on that are unnecessary, especially during this election <laughs> season when it's so easy for me as a woman to say, wait a minute, there are issues going on right now that these politicians are talking about that I could very easily say, wait a minute, that they're talking about me and my rights? Yeah, it is personal. But I don't need to do that mm -hmm. because I don't need to create those, as you said, create those chemical peptides. And you have to remember it's all about yin and yang. It has to do with that monotheism. It has just to do, the idea is that we had to have one God, one ruler, one this. Yes, there is one great source, but many different religions, many different belief systems, many different spiritualities, many different thought patterns because they're all perspectives. They're all, uh, if we had just one thought, that would be boring. But we have to have different so now go ahead and read a little further. This kind of storm can be destructive, and you'll regret your actions later. Hurtful, wo hurtful world, oh, words. <laughs> if I can speak tonight, hurtful words can be, will be carried on the wind and bring a tornado of betrayal, anger, and unnecessary angst. Interesting. When you think about this, um, the energy, how it builds up inside of you, you don't want to repress it. So tap it out, so you don't have to tank somebody else. Uh, there's so many th different attitudes that says you're supposed to be a certain way and you go to certain cultures and you're supposed to expect certain things. 
Well, how about if you just choose to be you and do you need to be nasty? There's some people that have such strong will that they'll allow themselves to be so superior, so haughtiness, and so, um, what do you want to call it, Jen? Aloof. Aloof. Well, they, they, they sit Above there and they, you. yes. And the thing is, is that I watch these people and they're not ashamed or, or guilt because they can do the power play. They can do the hierarchy. I don't like that. And it's not that I'm going to lose my power so that I don't become them. That used to be an old pattern that needs to be healed. But I choose to take my energy and do something with it elsewhere. So I release that pattern of that archetype and I go into a different direction. Go further. Find shelter. This turbulent weather will pass and your house will be untouched. Say no to drama. Wait till the storm blows over. Only then will you be heard. And there has to do with a lot of faith and, and beliefs. The belief is, is that you have evidence. So if you believe that you're going to be safe, but yet at the same time you believe that you're not, you have conflict that's within, and you will then probably have the one thing where you put more energy to, which is that you're not going to be safe, and which will then pop up. And there is this what's called the loss of hope. Your hopes are dashed. But if you allow yourself to have faith, and you know, you have a, a knowing very deep in yourself that that is going to come to pass and you don't have any other programs fighting you, yes, you will come out smelling like roses. Why? Because you just, you know it just like you know what your name is. Okay. Now, we're going to go to the East Coast. Yeah. All right. So, I need you to focus deeply now because there's so much chaos. I don't want to just take the top layer. I want to take the root of what's causing all of this. So let's reach. And she's picking a card, and what does she have? Ah, it has to do with your intention, number 22, and it's upright. It's very important to understand intention is everything on this planet. And if you don't think it is, then when you feel like you got to go to the bathroom, don't have the intention of going. Because if you had the intention of going, you'd go. So intention is everything. Go. Deliberate, clear intentions have the power to change your world. Your objectives will be fulfilled at this time. Inspired intentions are like magic arrows shot into the sky. The universe is bringing you a gift, showing you that you are hitting your mark. Recognize that you are not the one who has to do all the work. However, others help you co-create reality. You connect to the power of your intentions, sending it out into the field, then allow for synchronicity to work its magic. Perhaps the good intentions of others will inspire you to send out beautiful ones of your own. Own the life you want to lead. Live deli deliberately with clarity and detachment. Okay, so the thing that I'm asking spirit is, is that they need to live intentionally. Are they doing so now? And not with the, the, the spirit of what they need to, because from what I can tell, um, I don't know about the, the attitudes or the archetypes in those areas. You grew up in that area? Yeah, I grew up in Washington, D.C., and my father currently lives in Boston. So what kind of attitudes do you know that are in that area? Uh, Washington, D.C., it's interesting. The capital um, of the nation, the intention, I would say, is for great things to happen, for freedom, liberty, and justice. I yes. believe that that was the ultimate intention. However, now that, um, depending on who... The lobbyists are for different causes. Um, there's a, a joke um, going around the internet that politicians should wear, instead of a suit, a business suit, that they should wear like the NASCAR racers where they have all the different sponsors. Yes. Because I see that. Yes. Because they're, it's, they're to some degree being bought by different lobbyists however you feel about this okay now so that's so so there's the intention set but w the result that's happening right now is that there's a whole bunch of spins and different stories and di so many different agendas going forward um, that that's where a lot of the chaos and so I mean New York City is where the, the stock exchange is Boston is where you know our country was really a lot of, you know, was founded, Philadelphia is there, so that's where, um, uh, but then there's, you go down the coast, Florida, that kind okay. of thing. But, um, but th that's what, what I would <laughs> The same intention, on. the same intention I asked 
So they have intention, it's got good intention, and now all of a sudden it has been influenced by different things. It has moved and progressed forward. What I boiled down to and says, what is it they need to heal? And it was the great alarm, because you got an elections coming up. You got great alarm, and then it said bully. It went right back to being bullying again. And this is anti-bully month, where you bring the, the awareness of bullying, about what it is. Now let's look at this before Scott goes any further. The memes that go around on the internet that says something really great, it's got a great message, and then at the end, if you do not forward this, then you're basically worthless, or you're... What? Bad luck will come to you, or... Misfortune will come a to you. Curse you know, upon like your household. Letter. They're like the old chain letters. Right. Right. But what they're really doing is cursing. They want to blame oh. witchcraft and everybody else. But as far as the, the bullying, let's look at the memes. I don't mean to repeat myself, but look at the memes where they're cursing. And, you know, they got a great message and then they curse you at the end if you don't do what I say. So that is a form of bullying. Um, the It's October, so it's Halloween. It has to do with... What's, what's interesting is that way back when, we're not sure exactly what problems we're having, but we will make it through. As I was talking about how the energy was set in stone that we're going to look at it this way. And as the energy of men and people with that particular thought process and consciousness came through, it literally went into places and said, no, 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 we don't like the way you live, we don't like your religion, your spirituality, or any of this stuff. You're doing it wrong. Let me correct you, because this is the way you're supposed to follow it. So they gave them a religion, they gave them the thoughts, they told them what to do, and those that refused, they, they hurt them, they beat them, they conformed them, they killed them, they tortured them, until they became submissive. In other places, some people got smart and started to live in plain sight. Anything that you would call this religion, God, Mary, we will we'll say that it is something else. We'll keep our traditions, but change the name of it, just so that we can live in, in, in plain sight. So as this happens, now it is time to not have to cut up our, our who we are and our true identity. It's coming to light. I had watched Bullion today, this, this, this um, Christian couple started to bully this person because they put a Halloween picture. It was funny. It was a, it was a witch trying to start his broom, her broom. She's got a little starter switch. It went boom, 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 boom. You could just see the witch going, seriously, it's not going to work? And so they said, repent, repent, you're going to hell. And spouting out all this curse. It's a curse. I don't care what you're saying. It's a curse. You're condemning, you're judging, you're throwing your belief system and saying, if you don't do this, I get to burn you. That's just as calling you as a criminal. I watch this and I don't believe that it has to continue. That era of reigning is over. And so it is so important to understand, can we be done with bullying? If we don't like it, then we are the ones that have an issue. Heal your inner world so that you can create a better outer world. So, am I making sense? Yeah. Okay, sure. hopefully we're uh, staying online. But the bullying can be down right to where just friends are, Oh, we want you to go with us. You need to be with us. And you're like, but I can't. And they don't care what your reasonings are. So, you want to lie. Oh, when they say, oh, get your priorities in check. You need to be with us. You need to be with your friends. We want to be with you. And it's like, it's great love. It's Yeah, and as I've said before, there are times in my life when, oh my gosh, absolutely, I'm going to go, I'm going to do it because yes. these people, you know, my friends wanted me to hang out with them. Now it's different. My priorities are different. Right. And we have to be careful because broadcast energy is simply energy that comes from each of this. Have you ever been around somebody, and we've told the story where we went to the comic book convention, but have you ever been around somebody that you just went oogly googly over? Well, because they're broadcasting out this part of themselves that, like actors, act. They go out and they do what they need to do. And they do their best because they want to meet people. They want to do and be around people. So that energy is broadcasted. You know, I've seen people with great charisma, you know, that are dicks, but great charisma. And then there are ones that have great charisma, and you're like, oh, my God, I want to be around them. And then Tony, Tony um, Robbins... 
um, he has this great charisma. You want to learn because they possess something that there's a part of you that you desire or you like, you want to grow from or be a part of. And broadcasting. Take somebody that's miserable. They're still broadcasting. They, they, Misery loves company, mm -hmm. and they may have a louder broadcast signal because of that emotion that taps into some of, mm -hmm. you know, our core or whatever if we're feeling bad. All right, so read what uh, Mark said. There must be competition for us to strive forward, otherwise we will all end up stagnant and cattle instead of pawns. Well, I can say we can, can do competition, and I understand that, but it's also the wake-up of our soul is now has, has been very strong in these last, I don't know, 100 years, maybe 50. I mean, it, the, the, the strength of our spirit has been sparked so much that we don't need people to, com to give us competition. We don't have to project them to do that because all of a sudden we're breaking away from the norm. There are so many people that are going, you know what, I used to believe that of you, but I've had this incredible experience that, yes, I'm scared crapless, but I'm going to come out of my spiritual closet, or I'm going to come out of my closet, or I'm going to come out of this space, and I'm going to stand up and realize, you know what, I like what I got here. Keep your stuff. So it's not even about competition anymore, because now you're looking for like-minded people. Now you're going to the people that you know, there's people out there that's just like you, and you don't have to stay stagnant and have competition and fighting. You can propel each other forward. Like I know with Mark, he and, and even Octory and all these wonderful people, I go and I want to make sure that I see you get promoted. Yes, I know you're going to return the favor. It is learning to, to build the bridge together, and that's what I want to do the most. So did you break my little thing, Scott? Okay. We'll take a break. We're going to take we'll a right break back. because I've been watching the time. We're going to take a break right now. So, it was a little laggy during that break, so sorry about that, but we are back on the air. Being that there's a lot of stuff going on out there in the internet and the world, <laughs> we may have problems of breaking up. So we will do our best to just to, be mindful and yes. pay attention. Okay, so we were going to continue with something that, we, that was read on to the uh, chat room. So, okay. Jen? Okay, so some stuff that was going on in the chat room, I think as a society we've fallen. People too much pampering that we have now and that kind of thing. Ooh, I got something to say about that. Too. Okay, so you make your mental notes. When okay, it comes, so, and, oh, okay, go ahead. <laughs> so, go, go, go. And with the storm. So, in um, my theology of Emmanuel Swedenborg, he uses. Oops, I forgot to put my halo back on. <laughs> oh, angel's back. Angel's back. Okay, there we go. <laughs> oh crap! We told them. We told people what you were. <laughs> well, you Dang it! Still guess what Scott and I are. Right. Yeah. YouTube. Um. Anyway, so. Uh, theology of Emmanuel Swingberg. He's got this term called vastation. What the heck is vastation? Uh, it is when something comes to a complete end that there, people have been focusing so much on themselves, on the world, on material, whatever, rather than their spiritual nature. And so the story in the Bible of Noah and the ark in our tradition, we believe that it is a metaphor, that it, even though some people are really looking for where the ark is and Mount Ararat and that kind of thing. Um, so the story is that there was so much, um, what do you want to call it, evil, sin, whatever those definitions are for people, simply, which is turning away from God, that there was so much on a global scale, on a group consciousness scale, that there just needed to be a cleansing. And so God preserved Noah, which was a remnant of the goodness, and the rest was wiped away. So that is an example of vastation, that it was just completely wiped clean. In my humble opinion, I can see some of that happening currently. Is it going to be as large scale? Is there going to be a ginormous flood over the planet? I don't feel so, contrary to what some people may be feeling right now, um, based on the weather, but that there, there's an ending. Something, something has to end. There has to be an ending in order for this next chapter, this next beginning to occur. Um, and so that's what I see. And so things that we, but it, as we talked about earlier, it's the end of the world as we know it. It's not the end of the world. It's the end of the world as we know it. And so some people are clinging to the way things were and complaining about 
we were talking about modern conveniences and technology and that kind of thing. Um, so, but there's a shift. There's a generational shift. There's all kinds of shifts and great awakening that's um, happening right now. So what I see are the endings of old systems that no longer serve and that need to be replaced. All right. <clears throat> so that's my first opinion about that. Um, how do I want to put this? I don't know exactly the communication process. I just know that I connect with higher beings, a higher source. That I know that I have seraphims and masters around me, and they will show me pictures from time to time, and then I will find evidence to prove this energy, whether it is already a thought that's been on the planet. Now, she had said about the ending. Now, you have to remember, there was an involution process, so there was a point in time where God point, or the source point, it is when the great void went inward and contemplated and created a, a point. So it created the God point. As the God point then went inward and contemplated, it created a mirror image of itself. Then God said go, gave all the rights to go and create and report back. And whether, you know, we're the only ones that says there's time with space, that we say is good is evil. So as we started to take an evolution down the planes of existence, that's involution, coming down, we every time we had, uh, we turned inward and turned out, more time and space. So if you were to clap your hands real close together, that difference of the sound before your hands clap is how long it takes to manifest. We're out here in this seventh plane that when you put your arms straight out to the side and you clap, it takes that many more seconds And what to do what? Your information of a thought, sending it to source. Source says, okay, received it, lob it back so it can create in your reality. The frequency, time, consciousness, space, that expansion is very long. Now, every 28,000 years or so, the evolution changes, the flow poles change and it is meant to when we came down it was like coming through an hourglass you had to change shape you had to deform you had to expand you had to contract you had to take and what no longer serve had to be repressed or kicked off or done whatever and then there are things that you forgot when we came in this in the last 50 years the Victorian age the memories of the Victorian air has started to come back to the surface and it's like oh this is cool now, in the 80s, we were supposed to be the end of the world. That's because we had decided, since we already took the last step down of the involution, well, we didn't want to do it anymore. So we have been coming back up. And as we started to come back up at these time points, you know, how you doubt yourself and you're about ready to fail? You're like, oh, no. And then so then you give up. And then, no, 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 I can't, I can't give up. So it's going back and forth with the wave of consciousness about where are we. Now we're ready to be done with this. This is why you see a lot more people that is turning away from just thinking that I have to obey, I have to conform, I have to do this. And the bullying energy, the prostitute and the pimp, it, this energy doesn't really have to be anymore. And instead of standing up and fighting and occupying, you go inward and start changing the way that you can feel the power dynamics. When you've ever had anybody hit you or push you, you feel the energy come towards you. And then when anybody has ever hurt you, you usually can see which way the energy. All you are is energy and frequency. It's in and out of form, in and out of form. You're the one that gets to define those moments. You're the one that gets to decide. And, and how you change, how the, you know it, how you change your world is how you know it, is you learn to dissolve and resolve and bring that number, the color, down to zero. And you change the emotions. You change it. Why? It has nothing to do with thinking. It has to do with the interaction of moving energy. This is why the whole therapy healing technique works so well because when you're holding certain points on your wrist that have to do with the way that consciousness is and as you're placing your hand on your head and your forehead and your hairline, you are that's your frontal lobe. That's where you create reality. You wake up every single day recreating the same reality. There hasn't been a disturbance. And the only way to change you was to bitch slap you until you hit rock bottom, until you finally let go, or you were forced to in some form. Now, 
you are going to take more in charge. When you actually get to heal those emotions, then they're, they're, the entanglement cord changes. The synapses in your brain actually changes and reprograms yourself. You don't have to have the same thought pattern. You don't have to carry it from your genetic line. You don't have to look out and see the encoding from the group consciousness. You get the power of sculpting. We're moving back up. Okay, so that's the shift. The shift is happening. Does it have to be dramatic, like a bitch slap, like the hurricanes, or can it be a whispering opportunity? And I will tell you, I have learned many things that it's on a whispering opportunity. And what we'll do is we'll take a quick break, and then we'll come back, and I will continue on with this talk. Flies. Give an example, Scott. Issues of the past few weeks are growing more troublesome. Tend to responsibilities. Look to subtle clues for solutions. And we're talking about flies, not randomly, just out of the air. Ha ha ha. Not but there's the actually field, some right? thing, some conversation in the chat room that was talk that yes. was going on about flies. So those are flies. Now, one thing about flies that I've learned also was how can you stand the great irritation? When my mother died, we lived in a trailer. Um, we had tons of people constantly coming in and out of the day of the funeral. There, when everybody left, there had to be over a hundred thousand flies on my ceiling. It was, I had a black ceiling. And so, I'm killing them left and right, and it was like I had to get this releasement out of all the irritations that I had for three days of all the family members and everybody coming in and everybody having their opinion, how they're going to help, how they're not going to help, how they're going to do this, how they're pissed because people take advantage of that, how she was a great woman. And it was just a great irritation that I never got to get my shower in because somebody was always in there. I never got to really sleep because somebody had my bed. So I hadn't really had to cope with people in my space. So the fly irritation was that I just banged the heck out of my ceiling and vacuumed. A, then I realized, oh, I got this, the vacuum with a great big hose and started sucking the flies in because it was just a, a way to focus. And now she killed my little buddy the other day because I, I, in my office there was a fly that kept You're crawling back. around on my arm and it was tickling me, little which was killer. fine. She comes in my office, sits down, and this fly's bothered me. And I, I finally got all summer long, missed all the flies. I finally got one. We didn't even yeah, have that many Brenda's flies. Pet. It was my pet. I'm like over there going, excuse me, you can land and tickle on me, but you go over and pester her. Why? Stop sending the message. She's just going to kill you. Sure enough, I hear BAM! <laughs> I turn around and I go, I, I, you killed my buddy, didn't you? No! <laughs> <laughs> Liar. <laughs> so, so, she was, uh, Octarine, I don't see Ms. Irritations. Octarine said she thought it was went along with our involution topic. Ah, <laughs> it does it now. How? How now, brown cow? I don't know, but she... Why, is, fly? I'm just reporting. <laughs> She's reporting. Okay. I'm reporting in. Now, the involution evolution. Involution is coming down, and evolution is going back. Involution is that you voluntarily uh, chose to go further and further away from the source of love, where evolution, if you can find love, you find it twice in the sentence. Um, and so you're learning to come back to that part. The evolution is going back. Your soul wants you to resolve to evolve, whereas before it was just a journey of inwardness. Keep going and making decisions. What if, what if, what if, what if? Well, we've collected so much hell that all those negative experiences to protect ourselves has now turned against us so that we end up keep creating that reality from the caudate nucleus of fear. In the caudate nucleus, it's either going to be love or fear. Okay? And most of the time when we start to create with our reality of our forebrain, the energy goes back to our caudate nucleus checking to say, do you have a problem? Do you have a problem in there? Check your files. Oh, you do? Okay, we have to follow that one because it is a part of an instruction manual that says this is the way you have to act. Well, now, maybe files and flies got spelled wrong. Could be. The letters, got, be. The letters got switched around. <laughs> <laughs> now, the phoenix, getting rid of the old and bringing in the new. Now, what's funny is, is the phoenix has always been a part of the symbol for me, um, even our phoenix medicine, because that's part of the medicine woman cabinet. Medicine cabinet is the phoenix medicine. I don't put the word phoenix medicine, but it is a phoenix with the, with the um, what do you call it, that cod... Cadence, the... Cadence? Yes. Well, no, see, it's that, um, you know, the symbol 
with the wings and oh, the two the snakes going up. Stuff? Yeah, I can't remember. It starts with a C. I don't recall either. Never mind. Either way, we're fine. But the point is, is that it's about learning to burn up what you no longer need. So that means you resolve, you heal, you let go, you release, and you take and reclaim. So it's all about the energy of moving it forward and backwards. People say, well, I need to kill it. Why? The energy's still going to be there because the intention of the space is held by your energy. Killing it is the same thing as ignoring it. You have to actually detach, resolve, get the thought process down because you couldn't process it the first time. So you, when you take and you do the healing tools or you disrupt the signal or you let the process finish out. Again, I'll tell you about the polar bear. You've heard this story many times, Jen, haven't you? Yes. Why don't you tell it now? Okay, so the story of the polar bear that lives out in the wild, they actually have the ability to process out when something triggers what is their fight, flight, freeze response in a situation. The, um, what they were shooting them, did they shoot them with um, tranquilizer? Yes, because they and wanted to they, tag them. And then, they, right, they wanted to tag them. But then you could, there's this video where you actually watch their whole body shake and convulse. In the stomach. But, yeah. it, but it processes out because they they know how to process that out. Oh, because we're not been, domesticated. We've been domesticated, so we don't have that anymore. Right, and the processing that out means they don't hold that as a trauma or a drama. Their, their fight, flight, response freeze response actually does what it's supposed to do and not hold them. We become domesticated. We've had so much of uh, transforming into what it's supposed to be, the limitations and what we're supposed to do and this is what how we have to do it that we get stuck in those rules. And when it comes to, now this is what's interesting, so you need to release the energy and then reclaim it. Here's the thing, all things are possible, right Jen? All things are possible, yeah, yes. and it even talks about it in the Bible. Yes. All things are possible. Now, what's interesting, when you believe all things are possible, it's actually your faith. And the belief is because you have evidence. Now, if you can consciously conceive it, then you can believe it, right? Now, here's the thing that had brought up earlier in the uh, chat room. What's analog, Jen? It is, oh, there's the definition, of the di it's the opposite of digital as far as my understanding. It's more op operative, manual, it's more it, it clunky, more it's more mechanical. It, it takes it's, longer, it's it takes, a longer process it's the, exactly, to it's communicate, to do anything. Exactly. And then the digital, it is what, Jen? Uh, so digital is based on a binary system of communication, um, zeros and mm -hmm. ones. Don't ask me the exact technical definition of digital. But it's um, faster, and um, it's, in my estimation, it's how now our consciousness is being able to express itself, moving from analog into digital. And what we have because, seen... Because the universe is based up on code, so if it's in that binary system of code, then we're going to be getting back to the way that we were able to communicate at one point in time. Mm -hmm. So when you think about this process, and I was telling you that we came down on the plane of existence based on our, um, what do you call it, when you start creating that dimensional reality, one of the things that occurs is that I told you about the clapping of the hands. When you hear the clapping gets faster, it's because the time between you and the universe uh, the thought is possible and so then it becomes quicker and it becomes more of a knowing and it becomes more of a believable factor for you and you have more evidence and it's more true just for you. It'll be different for every individual being on this planet. There are different groups and factions that is meant to believe in certain things. Not, there's not one universal truth because there's many based on the group, soul groups that have chosen to go and on these adventures. And then these soul groups decided to come together and to compare notes. But then there's just been some great wars that's been happening. So it's truth is based on you. And when you go deeper into your meditation, going deeper out of the over-identification, which is ego, which is electromagnetic guiding on the apparition, when you take and look through that lens, 
you're looking through it. But the moment you forget your true identity and you dive into the, I'm angry, that's part of your identity. Um, this is what I know is true. That's your identity. You start to lose that part of yourself that has always been in the balance of love. And then you, you do everything you can to fight and play and do whatever it is you want to do with the energies. When you're in that state of remembrance, like when you feel the presence of angels or you feel the presence of God or you feel the presence of a loved one, there's a state of grace, of, of love. And what I want you to understand is that time between you and God or you and the universe and you're sending out your thoughts so they become things, when it becomes faster, the digital age is because we have been in the quickening. We're going back up the plane of existence. We're moving from hertz to infrared energy. And as we're starting to move up in that direction, you're going to get things to manifest quicker. So our modern conveniences are as big, is because there's a part of us that actually knows that our thought process, we're, we're picking up the signals and moving faster. We're getting the answers faster from source. And we're moving back up. Now, the more that you complain and criticize, you need to ask yourself, why? Um, we can divide it. We can split hairs. We can go all the way down to what we want. But is it worth fighting? Or is it that you want to learn something else? Where are you moving out of your stages of knowing? Are you moving from baby, student, to teacher, on to the master? Where are you on your stage of growth? You, your soul will spark. And like I said, with the East Coast, there has been a lot of intention, because I said, what is the root of why this is happening? And they said, it's the intention of growth. It's moving forward. Well, in order to move forward, there has to be some form of change. Like, if I'm moving forward and I want to get up and do stuff during the day, my body is going to have a physical um, attributes of, it could start smelling stinky. It could have problems where I should bathe. You know, it's going to do what it needs to do, but I need to take care of it. I need to eat, I need to sleep, I need to shower. So as I'm moving forward with great intention, I still need to change. I need to change the skin, the smell of my skin. I need to change the way that my body is receiving stuff, you know, as far as food or sleep. You have to be able to know that change can be as easy as changing your underwear or a bitch slap. So having a whispering opportunity or a bitch slap. So where do you want it? That ends up being the question. Okay? <clears throat> So I'm hoping it makes sense. But when you move forward, it's about your consciousness. If you're fighting, then there's a part of you that's creating, uh, you have a limitation somewhere in your soul's projection, or you have to let something go, or you have to learn to receive something in. That what part of the energy needs to come in and out of form? A lot of the people that in different, different factions that I've seen have been learning to unlearn what they've learned. They lived and learned, and now they must deal with pain and suffering and say, okay, it's just part of who I am. And it's like, no, you're much more than that. Now it's time to unlearn because it's the unlearning. You gave up. There's a part of you that was burnt out. A part of you says, I so don't want to do it. It's because it's the power dynamics of being subservient to that power. And if it's happening within, you're like, well, the sickness has kicked my butt. You then become subservient to the energies. But what created the energy to be there? And that's what we use all of the materials that we have that helps you to do so. So, <clears throat> any other uh, thoughts about this? Any of you? Either one of you? Oh, I do have something. <clears throat> but we could take a break. A promo. Alrighty, we're back. Now, as we talk about how... You know, what's interesting is somebody wrote that it says, but it doesn't justify the belief or make it true. Well, that sounds like an absolute truth there. Um, it is based on you and your individuality of how you know your life. Um, we can only take and be a catalog of life for you. You know, it is opening up those areas of your soul that moves forward. I just know that I'm responsible for this part of helping people to maybe tap into disengage stop the misfiring or stop this part of you that you don't want to be anymore um there's different parts and it's to help you to resolve to evolve okay now as far as the ending space literally you have to understand um i'll give you the example you need to learn to release 
I do a, since 2003 or 2004, I can't remember when I started, I started a empowerment to enlightenment class. And my building burnt down and I was still told that I had to continue. I found houses to do it out of. Um, I continued one way or the other to find spaces to do this class. Then, out of the blue, I could feel it for almost a year, but out of the blue it was, oh, done. Uh, uh, it's called the pass switch. And I said, do you want me to stop teaching? Yes. Okay, so then I told everybody, I'm done. I can't, I'm not going to teach anymore. And I had to release that energy of what I was doing, and then I received my energy back. I reclaimed it. What was very cool was the next day, I had people calling me to do telesummits. I had people that called, that called me to want to do specific... Oh, excuse me. Bless you. Thank you. It makes, it makes all these noises go on. All right. Um, yeah. <laughs> Call you to do telesummits. Yeah, they, they had me starting... I mean, worlds of opportunities started opening up when I took that energy off of the one space and to open up to others. So it's so important to understand that when you're doing a path switch, the universe is either going to force you or it's going to be a whisper and opportunity. But when you step up to the plate and you say, okay, I understand that this is the direction I'm being led into, it's so important to remember to release. Jen, is, um, Jen when, she was getting, when she was getting a divorce, she had to learn to release her husband.